Hey there! Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kit's Vintage Farmhouse here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this week, I've been working on some high-end Dollar Tree DIYs, and you are not going to believe these came from the Dollar Tree. Let's jump on in. For my first DIY, I found three of these wooden nutcrackers. They were $3 a piece. Now, I did find the ones that are $1.25, but they are substantially smaller than these, and they're made of plastic, whereas these are made of wood, and they're a lot bigger. They're almost a foot tall a piece. I absolutely love these, and I've always wanted to do a nutcracker DIY, so I got them. I took them outside, and I spray-painted them white with my Rust-Oleum two times. And now back inside, I have these two little Dollar Tree crates. They are glued side by side. I had used them in a previous DIY, and right now I am just taking the sticker off the back. And you'll see when I flip these over that I had already previously painted them with the Waverly Antique Wax and wiped off the excess with a baby wipe. And that's good because that's the color I was going to do these anyway. And I also have this small rectangular crate. And those are the supplies that we're going to need. I went ahead and painted the parts that weren't painted with that Waverly Antique Wax, wiped off the excess with the Baby Wipe, and now I have some spackle that I'm just filling in that little area where those two pieces are glued together because it wasn't a perfect seam. Then here's my nutcrackers after they were painted white and dried. I also covered them with the Waverly's Antique Wax, and I wiped off the excess with the Baby Wipe. And then when that was totally dry, I put a little bit of the Waverly plaster on just a little distressing brush. And I just kind of, like a little chippy brush, and I just kind of very lightly go over it one more time because it makes the most beautiful outcome. And it, it just kind of calms down that antique wax and just makes it very pretty. I really like the way this turned out. Here you can see exactly what I do. I just very lightly, or kind of lightly, cover it with the antique wax. I don't do like a full coverage. And then I use that baby wipe to wipe off the excess. I also use that baby wipe to kind of rub it around on the whole little guy there so that I can get the color that I want. Now, this is just for inspiration. You may not even like the way that it looks when you add the antique Waverly wax, but it's just a personal preference. I do like that. So, if you don't like that, just omit that part. These guys are gorgeous when you leave them just plain white also. I make sure that I get every part of these little nutcrackers. This one had the little sword that he was holding fell off. And so I just made sure that I got it too. And you see each of mine have a little hat on. One has a gun on his side. One has a sword. And another one has something else. I'm not really sure what that is. But yeah, these little guys were so cute. And for three bucks a piece, that was such a good deal. So after I do the Waverly Antique Wax, I just use that little bit of white that I have on my chippy brush until my eyes are happy and I'm satisfied and I have what I want. Here shows the difference. This guy has not been, had the Waverly Antique Wax and the one on the left has. And like I said, the one on the right has not had the wax on him yet, but you can see the difference. It's a very subtle difference the way that I do it, but I really do like when you do the white and the Waverly Antique Wax together. It almost looks like a birch wood. I'm not really sure any other way to describe it because you know how birch wood is a very, very light, like whitish brown? That's kind of what it reminds me of. So now we're just going to move on to our next step because I'm doing the exact same thing on this last guy. I'm just doing the antique wax, and then I'm just going to do the distressing with the white once again. Since I had my Waverly white color already out, I just took one of these little signs that comes from the Dollar Tree 
There are three in a pack, and it just says Merry Christmas, and I did a very heavy dry brushing over the sign. By now, where I had added the spackle here, it's totally dry, so I just sanded that down so that it would be perfectly smooth on the front, and then I went back over it with the antique wax once again, and I just wiped off the excess with a baby wipe. Now I'm going to take that little small rectangular crate and I'm just going to glue it to the two larger ones because this is going to complete our little like stage, I guess you would say, where we're going to mount our little nutcrackers. I have one of these wreath rings and they come three in a set. I'm only going to be using that larger one and I snipped it with my wire cutters because we need it to be open. Now it's time to put everything together. I took a thin piece of my floral foam and I'm going to glue it behind the top part of the stage <laughs> or the middle stage. And then I take my floral foam where I had snipped it and cut it open and I push it into that floral foam so that it will stand up on its own. And now I'm going to start putting my little guys up on the stage the way that I want them. I've got a few of the little bottle brush trees and I don't need the little bottom part, the little platform, so I pull it off because they have wire inside of them and that's what I'm going to use to stick down into the floral foam so that they will stand up. And I'll put three of them right in the middle of the stage. I have one Christmas pick that I got from Walmart and I want to say it was $3.97 and I pulled some of it apart and it's got like the red berries, some cedar and pine in it. And I'm just going to add two sprigs, one on each side of my little hoop. And I am careful to push it into that floral foam. It's also wired so it's really easy to just maneuver it the way that I want it to so that it'll look like it's going up and around the ring behind the guys. And now that I have each of the nutcrackers in the position that I want them, I'm just simply gluing them down with my hot glue gun. I took the little wood piece that says Merry Christmas that I had painted earlier, and I'm just going to place it on the front. It looks like a banner going across, and it is perfect for this piece. I take two of these small little berry picks that I get off of Amazon and I'm going to stick those in behind my soldiers and then I have some little tiny buffalo check ribbon. They're little bows that I buy off of Amazon. They're little pre-made bows and I'm going to stick one on each of my little nutcrackers. And those little bows and those picks also are in my Amazon store in case you're looking for some of those. I also had two little presents from the Dollar Tree that I'm going to glue down, one on each side. And then I'm taking two more of those picks and I'm going to stick them up in the front behind the main nutcracker. And man, don't you know, I wish that I would have thought about this before I put this hoop together. But... It kept bugging me that I didn't put lights on it, so I pulled out one of my little battery-operated lights, and I get these little fairy lights off Amazon. They're only like 15 bucks for maybe 12 of them or something. I love to use these fairy lights always on my little projects. So what I'm trying to do <laughs> is just go around and around all the way around my loop and then I leave the very end of my little battery pack out so that I can glue it down on the very back of that floral foam. And I always make sure to glue my battery packs down to where I can change the batteries out if need be. And that's all there is to this very first one. I hope you guys like it. Feel it. 
it in the air that every child got their hearts filled up with joy yes it's christmas oh Snow is falling down, all the colored lights lighting up this town. And as I walk outside, hear the Christmas choir sing. If you're enjoying this video so far, would you please give me a big thumbs up? That's the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what in the world are you waiting for? We would love to have you to be a part of our family. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button. It's totally free. Now let's jump into DIY number two. I've got one of these cloches from, of course, the Dollar Tree. And it said large cloche. And then I'm going to use this small piece of rice paper. All of this rice paper came together in one sheet. It's a blue and white, and it's got just different scenery on it. I chose the one that had a beautiful Christmas bird on it. I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into a little bit of water and go around this circular object so that we don't have straight edges because it just looks more organic and real if you do it that way. When I wet the edges, I just go back and just kind of pull it apart because like I said, it looks so much better when it's not a perfectly straight edge. And it just blends in better. I'm just going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to place it all over the very front of this picture. And you don't need a big thick coat, but you do want to make sure that you get it really well on the edges. And I'm going to place this up inside my dome and I'm going to glue it on that front side where you will be looking directly at it when you look at the cloche. Next, I'm going to take a really good portion of Mod Podge and I'm going to place it inside the cloche, like at the bottom part. And then I'm just going to add a bunch of my faux snow. And I finally remembered to buy some more of my glitter. This is my favorite diamond glitter it's called solian i got this one off of amazon but you can get them at walmart also and i'm going to go all around the front part of the dome and up at the top with some mod podge and then i'm just going to sprinkle my extra fine diamond glitter all inside it it makes the most beautiful glow when it's dry it's so pretty I just put it all over the whole inside where I just sprinkle it in there and kind of roll it around. And then I just tap off and pour out the excess. Then I take one of these cute little pine picks that I get off of Amazon. I only had room for one of them. And it's also got little pine cones on it and berries. And I'm going to place that and a golden pine cone that I get from the Dollar Tree on the bottom there. I'm just going to glue them down. And meanwhile, I had stuffed one of my little things of fairy lights inside the top of the dome. I had to cut the stem of my little berry pick off because it was just too long and it wasn't going to fit right. So once I glued everything together and I have my lights in my dome, I just placed those two pieces together. At first, I thought to use one of my little pre-made ribbons that I buy from the Walmart. And this is a black and white striped one. I had put it down there on the bottom. And then I kept looking at it and I just didn't like the way that that looked. But in the meantime, I took a little candle warmer that comes from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to push a thing of lights that I got from the Discovery Outlet for like $1.99. They're these little round bulb lights. I'm going to push them in the part, in the back part of the little candle warmer where that the candle normally would go. And from the front, you can see through it. And it's a little battery pack, so I'm just going to put some batteries in there. And then I'm going to put some of the lights up in the top of the dome because there were so many. In the end, I decided to use this little 
piece of homespun that I have. The fabric is called homespun. I just made a simple little bow, a little shoestring bow with that. And then I've got to use one of my little black buttons. I just got like a few things of buttons that I found at the Dollar Tree again, which by the way, their buttons are the best deal that you can find. There's like a little thing. They're usually around the checkout area and you can get, it's about 50 to 100 in there for $1.25. I'm just going to dovetail the ends of this little homespun. And then now that I've got everything all lit up, that's all she wrote for this second one. It was so super simple and gorgeous. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It's the night of the dear Savior's birth. Christ was born O oh, night divine O oh, night divine For the very last DIY DIY number three I have some cost, some cotton muslin here, and I get mine from Hobby Lobby, but I'm pretty sure you can get it from Walmart too. And you can cut a one inch slit with your scissors in this. I just cut about five slits at one time, about one inch a piece, and then you can use your hands to rip it, and it makes a perfect rip every time. And the edges of this are a little frayed whenever you pull it apart, which is what I really like. And you're going to need a whole bunch of those pieces. And then you're going to need this little tree form that comes from the Dollar Tree. I just cut all the tinsel off of it and pull it off. And I'm going to use some of this floral wire. It actually feels like bread ties, the kind that I'm using here. And this has like little spiky things all around it. And I'm going to use those. I'm going to add a couple more pieces of this floral wire around because we're going to be tying our strips on all the little pieces that are going horizontally and we just need to add a couple more on there. So now I've got my muslin strips, and I also have some strips from an old ribbon that I have, and some Dollar Tree ribbon. I just have a mixture of several different types of strips. I'm going to start these off at 11 inches, and I'm going to place two pieces together at 11 inches both, and all I'm going to do is wrap it around one of the little sides there, and just literally just tie it. I had also cut some drop cloth in these one inch strips, or my drop cloth was really more like one and a half inch wide. And I put the drop cloth around the very bottom rung here because it just gives it a fullness and it made the whole tree just kind of stick out a little bit more. And I also did my drop cloth at 11 inches. And as you see, you just go from each little thing over and you just tie your little uh, drop cloth, which is what I had on the very bottom rung.
And each time that I go up the tree, I'm going to place a smaller, like a shorter piece of ribbon. I started off at 11, and then I'm going to go 10, 9, and 8. And you just put about two rows of each of those sizes. You see, I finished my drop cloth on the bottom, and we're going up to the second one. And this one, I'm still on 11 inch strips, or they're 11 inch long. And I'm using two, I'm using a piece of muslin and just a piece of that ribbon. And I'm tying two little um, pieces in each little section. I hope that makes sense. As you get further up the tree, it gets hard to add two different ribbons on each little section. So you just add one. It's just whichever one you have room for. And then when you get close to the very top, you're not going to be able to tie anything up there. You see that little bit of black sticking up. So what I did was just make a simple messy bow, which is just a bunch of my bows made into an X formation. And then I tied them on top. I also literally just took a piece of fabric like I did here and folded in half. And then I'm just going to glue that while it's folded in half up at the very top and that's exactly what the pieces looked like before so it disguises it really well but see it's just a piece of ribbon folded in half and glued to the top and then when you get that process done and get everything placed on there what you're going to do is just cut at an angle and just make sure that you cut your pieces the way you want them where they're getting smaller as it goes up here is just a regular messy bow, and that's, you know, where you just put a whole bunch of different uh, fabric in an X formation and tie it together with a piece of jute twine, and then I put that on the very top. And while I'm finishing my tree up, I just wanted to address something that's happening on my channel. Lately, since it's Christmas, a lot of YouTubers, most of us YouTubers, are getting these comments sent back to our subscribers but they're not from us mine will say like it's crafty kathy on nice gram and to my knowledge there is not even a nice gram that exists this is a scam do not fall for it i am going to have a giveaway on my channel in the next few weeks but i'm going to announce that giveaway on my channel and i'm even going to announce who the winner is on my channel just so that you know it's not, you know, that these other guys are not from me. But you will know when I do have a giveaway. I will let you know. You will never randomly just hear about a giveaway. And these people are wanting, apparently some of the subscribers said that when you go into that, they're wanting you to send them $85 for your, uh, to pay for whatever your prize is that you supposedly won. But like I said, this is not even from me. Just don't fall for it. If you can, you can hit that comment and hit report. So you have to report those. I have been reporting everyone that I see to YouTube. Um, I'm not really sure what they do about it. But I have reported probably a 100 of them at least. So if you see anything just out of the blue that says that you've won something on any YouTube channel, it's not real. But I just wanted to address that really quick while I'm finishing up my tree here. To make the base for my tree, I used an old chair leg that had a screw in it. And I'm just going to take like an empty ribbon spool and I'm going to lay it on top of that. And then my tree will lay right over the top of that ribbon spool and it holds it still. And then for the very top, I picked a totally dazzled jewel. And I'm going to leave them in the description box. That way, if you guys need some Totally Dazzled, you can go and get some. They're awesome to embellish all your stuff with. Here, I just took some of that ribbon, and it's like a pearl ribbon. I got it in the ribbon section at Hobby Lobby, and I just glued it right underneath my star and kind of swagged it around to the back and glued it down. And I did two of those, one on each side, and it almost made it look like a little swag, like a little curtain swag in the very front. And it turned out really, really nice.
Then the very last step on this tree is just to kind of trim it uh, just anywhere where I see fit that needs to be trimmed up just a little bit to make it the exact shape you want it. And then you just fluff it out and that tree is done. The next tree is super easy. I'm using these little foam trees that I got at the at the Hobby Lobby. There was about six of them in a pack for maybe $2 at the most. And I am just measuring out what I need on this little fur. I get this fur from Amazon. It came in like four different colors. And I am simply just going to glue the fur and roll this to where it's gonna fit on the little cone and use my hot glue gun to glue it. Then after I get all the fur on the way that I want, I'm just going to go and give it a little trim and trim it down to make it look the way that I want it to. I'm just going to stick a simple dowel up in the middle of my tree and it's a dowel that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to place it in a little pot. The very last tree that I'm going to make is with another one of these little foam tree uh, things, the little foam trees that I get from Hobby Lobby. And I'm taking this fur ribbon that I get off of Amazon and I'm simply just going to glue it around the bottom and then one more toward the top. It only took two little passes to cover this tree. And I'm going to do the exact same thing by putting the dowel, putting the dowel inside the tree and putting it in a little pot. And then of course, I'm just going to embellish them with a little star on the top. And I didn't feel that they needed much more than that. Then when you get finished putting your fur on, you just trim it down a little bit to your liking. You know, this is just for inspiration. So you may not even like the fur, I don't know, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was to make these simple little trees. And I also used a little stamp that I had that said peace on earth. And I just stamped the front of the little pots that I put the trees inside. She hops, she doesn't run, she hops like a little deer does. It's just too much for me. I just can't handle the cuteness. 
I really can. Over licking that bowl. I can't feed her out of these. She's got two of those, um, those type of bowls that are like the silvery bowls. The metal bowls, that one there. She does drink water out of it, but I don't put food in that one because she can't really get to it. So I literally have to get like a little Tupperware uh, top and put her food in there, her big one spoonful. And she tears it up. And she's over there licking it right now to let me know that she's wanting some more. And her cropped tail. Can we just talk about her crop tail for a moment? Now, I mean, how cute is that? It's a bob. It's like a little, oh my gosh, y'all. God made this dog especially to just mm, 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 melt me. Mm, 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 mm. Where are you going? Where are you going? What you doing? I love you. I love you. Mm -mm -mm. Best Christmas gift ever. She was actually my daughter's, one of my daughter's Christmas gifts, but let's just be honest. Who do you think Mama got this dog for? Did we fool him, Roxy? Did we fool him? Because everybody knows that you're my dog. Yeah, you're mine. You're my girl. You're my girl. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Little squirt. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Mm -mm. Hey, you're not tough. <laughs> hey, girl, come here. Come here, girl. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. You're not tough. Hey. You don't even bark. You beep. You don't scare me beeping around. You don't scare me. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you, get you. Oh, oh, she's bad. Oh, she's tough. Oh, she is a ball of fury. Oh, come on, girl. Do something about it. Do something about it. Let's fight. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. She's furious. Ain't got a single tooth in her head. But she's tearing me up. Yes, she is. Oh. 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 She's a bad, 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 bad girl. She makes me feel so good. <laughs> She's a bad, 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 bad girl. And she makes me feel so good. Oh, I love my little girl. Oh, 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 she's killing me. She's ferocious. <laughs> Come on, girl. Do something about it. You do something about it. You want to fight? Do something about it. Do something. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Rah. <laughs> Put some action behind your threats. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. 
I ain't afraid of you. Come on. Come on, girl. That's right. She is the cutest. I, I, mm, 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 mm. She has got every one of us just tore up. This dog has just tore us up, y'all. I really do feel like God sent this baby right here to help heal our hearts from little Sabby. Because you can't help but laugh at her. She is just... And look, I, I have never seen a dog this cute. When we take her out in public, everybody walks up to us and the first thing they ask is, Is that dog real? Nah, don't you do it! 